Okay, so uh, we're gonna get started here. So I have the, the, the format of this. If you've been to previous Ruby comps, usually it's just Matt sort of standing up there all by himself in a big open room with just the barrage of questions. What we're gonna do here is I have sort of six or seven questions that we'll get into and we'll kind of riff off of them. And we have another mic, so I, maybe what I'll do is uh, get a volunteer who could help me uh, hold that mic and then whoever, if you have questions in the audience that you wanna ask while we're doing this, you can come up and just stand up and then we'll sort of have op open questions because hopefully our discussion will kind of get things turning and you'll wanna ask stuff that I didn't get into. Um, so I've got the bike here. We'll, st we'll do that sort of a little towards the end. The softball question. Softball. How was Denver? Did you like Denver? I like Denver. The, yeah. the last time it was in, the conference was in suburb. Yeah, but out this, by the airport. Yeah. But this time it's the, it's the downtown. It's, yeah, it's nice a little, nice. little, little more walkable than last mm -hmm. time, I think. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, I have no, no time to see work around the town yet. No. Oh. But I have tomorrow uh, extra, other day, extra day. So, so, so what I you're mean, saying is if someone wants to show you around the town, they should just Make, make reservations with you, some mm -hmm. local here who wants, to, who wants to be Matt's tour guide, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yes, please. So there's an opening there, if anybody, hint, hint, wink, wink, you wanna have Matt's <laughs> on, your, on your hip the whole day, so maybe talk to him afterwards. So, um, okay, so real questions now. Yes. <laughs> now that we're all warmed up. Um, so uh, this one is very specific, but we'll kind of make it more general, which was, have you looked at Clojure's reducers? Can we get immutable collections so that Ruby can copy Clojure's strategy? Which, I, that's a very specific question. Mm -hmm. I think the larger question here would be, um, have you thought about what kind of, say, immutable data structures or those kinds of things that you think would be interesting to have either native into Ruby or as a gem, or have you thought about those kind of things in the context of Ruby much? Well, the Actually, the, we cannot remove those mutable collection from Ruby. No. It's not Ruby anymore. <laughs> so, so, so the, but I admit that the benefit of the immutable data structure, like the, uh, the immutable uh, set. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can see if it goes well in, in Ruby or not by having gems mm -hmm. of that, that data structures. Okay. But I don't know about the future, but yeah. if the, everyone uses that, if everyone uses that kind of data structure in the in Ruby program, so the, it might be uh, possible to get a, this data structure into the standard Ruby, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure. Here's a related question. Are you confused by the closure and just other languages and things use of the word uh, uh, Persistent to mean immutable I, that throws me off all the time. Have you seen that? Uh, They're always talking about we have persistent hashes, and I think are you saving them to disk or something? Yeah. I don't know what. Yeah, anyway, that's just, that's just me, I guess. Yeah, it happens sometimes for yeah. me as well. <laughs> you know, I'm not from the you know, structures, uh, functional programming background, so yeah. the the word persistence is it means a little bit different. Yeah, to me yeah, as it well. means it means disks and stuff <laughs> to me. It means going to be there next time, right? Um, so this is sort of a, you know, Ruby is gonna be 20 soon. Mm -hmm. So looking back over sort of the 20 years, is there a feature, this is, we get this question every year, so maybe it's changed, but is there a feature of Ruby that you wish you'd done differently? Or looking back, is there something that you wish you'd done sooner or maybe not done? Mm -hmm. Well, the, the biggest thing is, as, as always answered, yeah. so the biggest thing is I would, we should have removed was the, the some kind of the weird magic global variables like data slash or something <laughs> like that. The, the, at the beginning of the design of the Ruby, I borrowed many things from Perl just because you know I I wanted to I wanted to do the tasks mm -hmm. to that uh, Perl can do. So so I borrowed the I borrowed the the, the functions uh, the string operation functions as a string method, and then the, I, I borrowed regular expression, I borrowed uh, several th things out of Perl, but you know, these kind of magic variables are too much. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, so thinking back to those early days, was there, you know, like Larry, uh, Larry Wall was always fond of saying, or was fond of telling the story about like, 
you know, he wrote Perl because he had this crazy weird data set that he had to work on at the time. Was there something that you were working on at the time that you wanted to write Ruby for, or is it just, you were just like, this would be cool to build? Yeah, the latter. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm not really the person who wants to solve the something by making tool, mm -hmm. but you know, I really, really love to create tool. Sure. So I, I don't care about the, how to use the tool. <laughs> So I just wanted to make a tool. Uh, uh, no, absolutely. Um, you so know, I'm a tool master, not a carpenter. <laughs> Do you think, were the first you know, five years or so of working on Ruby hard? You know, before, because you know, I think it's one, one thing that's interesting is, uh, at least I personally don't know a lot about, you know, I've heard kind of anecdotes about the history of Ruby before, say, 2000. So mm -hmm. we'll call that pre-Dave -Dave Thomas, if you will. <laughs> Pre-Dave Thomas. Right. So, but was it hard in those early days? Because you were kind of, you know, if, if you were working on it by yourself and you're working on it cause, just because you wanted to build a tool, did you get discouraged? Did you get like, maybe this is not a thing I should waste my time on or something like that? Uh, yeah. Uh, the first, say, five years, there was, uh, I don't know, may, maybe less than a few hundred people using Ruby right. in, in Japan all, only. And then, you know, but it was a hobby back then. Mm -hmm. My hobby. So when when you do fishing, so you you don't say this is a waste of my time or something like that. <laughs> some people do. Yeah, <laughs> some people do, but most people don't. <laughs> people so, who like to fish, certainly. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. So they they could catch the fish or not, right. but it's not wasting time. Right. It's it same for me. So it was it. I consumed a lot of time programming Ruby, make creating Ruby, but you know. It was fun. It mm -hmm. was fun. It was great fun for me. Yeah. So the after the five six years of effort, effort. Yeah. So I I didn't I didn't uh, regret anything. Yeah. Those first those early years. I mean I know that I've seen the the original IRC transcript where Ruby gets the, mm -hmm. there's like the discussion. What should I name this thing? I've seen those. What in those early days was it? You know I know that. I'm pretty sure Dave tells a story about like finding Ruby on some FTP server under mm -hmm. the Lang folder, that kind of thing. Be like, what is this thing? I think I'll play with it. That kind of... Was that how people found it? Um, just sort of those first few years? Or was it just people that you, you know, other Japanese developers that you would know you'd tell, hey, you should mm -hmm. try out my thing? Mm -hmm. or... So back then we had the something named the Net News. Net News, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, we, I posted the, the Ruby source code in the Net News, the source code group in uh, 95, December 95, in, in Japanese domestic group. Mm -hmm. So there's a few, few hundred Japanese uh, hackers <laughs> found, yeah. found the Ruby language. And a few, few days later, so we formed up the mailing list. So we had started discussing about the language and mm. the bugs. And the, the, the very first the mail of the mailing list is the, from my friend. So congratulations about the releasing your, your, soft, uh, your program language. <laughs> the second one, I found a bug. <laughs> <laughs> the third one was, okay, I fixed it. <laughs> well, that's great. Uh -huh. the, the fourth one is, I found another bug. <laughs> <laughs> that goes on and goes on. So for last last 15, 17 years. Yeah. <laughs> so how many are those, are, are many of those people still in the Ruby, still in the Ruby community? Uh, yeah, some of them. Yeah, okay. Do, yes. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Out of, out of first 200. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But you know, some of them, you know, they go off and find other things mm. or they get busy or whatever. Yeah. Right, absolutely. That's interesting. So, um, back to the questions here. So, um, I guess it's been brought up in a bunch of talks, and it had, it got asked a bunch of different ways in the uh, the questions here. With people kind of wanted to hear your thoughts about what you think is going to happen with, say, threading in in Ruby in C Ruby, um, and we could riff off that to talk about like what your feelings are about actors and fibers and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Just kind of your your general feelings about them. Okay, okay, it's a bug in 90, uh, the early 90s, so I thought the threading was a good idea. So the back then, we have a single com CPU mm -hmm. for a single machine, mm -hmm. so we don't have to care about using multi-core. I didn't expect that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, this, the having threads uh, may make uh, some 
pattern, the some stru uh, program structure make mm -hmm. easy. So I integrated, I, I somehow implemented the green threads. Mm -hmm. it, that was good enough for back then. Oh yeah, it was good yeah. enough for a long time. Yeah, but you know, the, the situation has changed the last five, six years. So mm -hmm. then, then the problem it come, comes. So, so I used to be a, a fan of the threading, but I actually changed my mind last 10 years. Okay. So the actor and the other the model is much better. Okay. So would you, would you, would you want to see, you know, there's all kinds of actor libraries and stuff like that. Would you, would you want to uh, anoint? Would you want to make one the standard one? Or would you, are, are you happy to just have, you know, because I think that, um, you know, actors, you know, different implementations of actors can mm -hmm. do different things, can be implemented yeah. different ways. And so, you know, I think you're probably, or you probably are saying like, well, we've got threads, we're sort of stuck with having threads at some level, but would you ever want to have actors sort of built in mm -hmm. so that maybe it matched what you were thinking a little closer now? Yeah. The, the, you know, the, the very reason the Ruby is loved by so many people is Ruby is designed by me, myself, which mm -hmm. is knows about language which use, who use the language. Mm -hmm. But I, I, not, I don't consider myself as a, you know, the threading guy, or the polar concurrent guy. <laughs> so the, I, I'm not, I don't think I can make a, the, the right decision about the, the mm. actor library or the threading. Oh, okay. So the, I'd, lo I'd rather ask you guys to propose and discuss about the, the concurrency model for future mm. Ruby, but, but threads, <laughs> <laughs> then, then propose uh, the, some kind of the future standard uh, concurrency model for okay. Ruby language. And that, that's a good sort of... Uh, yeah, uh, and, uh, uh, yeah the, and the situation will be different from implementation to implementation. Like uh, we, C Ruby has the weak threading model like uh, due to the... Uh, interpret global lock, mm -hmm. but the Rubinians don't have any problem sure. since we, we, we you don't have any legal legacy we have. We right, have. exactly. Yeah, um, I think that, that so another thing there is sort of M Ruby. So M Ruby doesn't have threads, and you don't in, intend it to ever mm -hmm. have threads either, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, since M Ruby is is target the the smallest target of the M Ruby is the the tiny computer, so mm -hmm. we, we cannot have any operating system support for any concurrency. Right. Okay, and and. Uh, sort of related to that. Um, ha, have, so have people, I've kind of seen people doing the little interesting experiments with mRuby, and I guess like one sort of use case that people have for using mRuby on like a multi-core amazing machine mm -hmm. would be like having multiple mRuby instances mm -hmm. sort of per native thread. Is that sort of, that's kind of one common thing that you see happening or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, since mRuby uh, is very small mm -hmm. by footprint, like a, the, he, it requires less than 500 kilo kilobytes in in uh, Intel machines mm -hmm. and uh, less than 100 kilo on your own um, CPU. So it since it requires so so small footprint, so you can easily create uh, uh, many uh, virtual machines mm -hmm. in the process. Oh, okay, cool. Um, another house sort of housekeeping question. Um, uh, and this has kind of been brought up before by me sometimes, by other people some other times. What is your feeling about the, like, the standard library and if, if it should be cleaned up? And I know that we're sort of in, in, in the midst of kind of making it into gems. And what is your feeling on that? Should we continue to pull things out? Like, do we still need a brieve.rb, that kind of thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, the, at, at the beginning of the 1.8 uh, era, which is... Seven eight years yeah. ago, yeah. so you know the since we we d didn't have the uh, usable JRV yet and uh, no ruinous yet, so we had a we took the strategy of battery included. Yeah. So you ha you download the Ruby, you have everything in it. Oh yeah, Python. Yeah. I mean, the, the yeah, most, PHP most, most did that. Yeah. The same yeah. Thing. yeah, PHP did that. Python did that. Oh, I lost the. Oh, oh no, it's back now. So, so well, there was a time differential field there for a moment. There's a little glitch in yeah. the matrix. But, Continue. But you know, time goes on. We we had Ruby gems. It it is quite easy to implement the the, the third party library for, for by clicking one one clicking. Mm -hmm. But so 
you know, uh, then the, the battery input strategy uh, appears to be uh, wrong in some, some aspect, okay. like, a, like a maintenance goes off, went, went off. <laughs> so sure. uh, we had uh, a maintenance level in the standard library, uh, right. standard cores. So that's the reason uh, we uh, proposed the, the Jamify and the standard library. So mm -hmm. we are under the underway, but so Ruby 2.0 will have some uh, Osley library out, out, out for gems. Mm, okay, so this is sort of related to that. Do you feel like um, Ruby 2 can, can, can it break any incompatibility? And I'll be specific. So like right now in 193, we have two YAML libraries in the standard lib. Two, so, two well, YAML libraries. Would we, for 2.0, would we like there to be just one? Or is, it, are we, is 2.0 really focused on that making sure that it's exactly compatible just like it was with 9, uh, 193? The priority is the having compatibility. Okay. So the, the, rather than having trouble with the compatibility, it, so we, we rather have the two, uh, two JSON libraries okay. in, inside. Just because, you know, remember the 187, which has the small compatibility problem with mm -hmm. variables, and the, 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 you know, the many people claim that we cannot use 187 that for a long time, right. maybe years. Oh, I remember. So, yeah. <laughs> I hate that kind of situation. Yeah. So I don't, I don't want that kind of situation. So to be in, in your in your eyes, where I mean, how long would you, you know, one nine has been around for a very long time. One nine three has now, and you know, a, a huge number of people have moved to one nine three now. How, where do you, how long would you want, say, one eight seven to be around for? I mean, maybe it's today. Maybe it's like now, no more, delete it off the FTP yeah. server, kind of thing. <laughs> This, that's the scorched shirts mm -hmm. policy to release management. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm, I'm not the release manager, so that we cannot say for sh sure about the one the the destiny of one one eight. Right. But, but we declared the the maintenance team declared the one eight seven will be shut down by uh, June next year. Okay. So you have to uh, start moving on to right. one nine. Things and like security bugs and stuff yeah, aren't going to be backported. Yeah, we, right. we will no longer fix the security problem for 1.8 mm -hmm. after uh, next year. So, so yeah, move on to 1.9 <laughs> right now. <laughs> then, so the, since we try to accomplish 100% compatibility, we try. Yeah. So, so it, is, it, it should be quite easy to move, uh, move from 1.9 to 2.0. So, so I, I hope and I believe 1.8 and 193 will be disappear very yeah. soon. I mean, I think having two sort of two versions that you're maintaining, 193 and 20, is probably a lot. Yes. You know, and then even just for mm -hmm. in, since I know that you know, well, ne Heroku's in, n helping out and isn't in the picture now. But before it was all volunteers. You know, other than maybe you and a couple of people yeah. that maintaining it even. So yeah, once um, we had maintained the five versions of Ruby, yes. what was a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is I, exactly related to that, which is so where when do you think the next? So two O is a big compatibility mm -hmm. release. It's, Get to uh, Ruby 2.0 out there. Well, all f by the way, I'm sure you're going to feel amazing when Ruby 2.0 gets out there. You're going to be, oh, we we did it finally. We did it finally. Yeah. So wh when do you think the big, the the big, you know, there's got to be features that it will be incompatible that we want to go forward with. Do you th see that as like Ruby 3? Should we we could call it Ruby 3000? 3000. <laughs> no, Ruby 3 is okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, but is that what you're thinking? Maybe you know, like maybe a Ruby 3. Maybe we're looking at. You know, and I, I, this is maybe you haven't thought much about yeah, this. Yeah, we we've just started about talking about Ruby two o. We call it post two o right yeah. now, and it, I'm I'm not sure yet though. We just start discussion, so we encourage you to that uh, to join the discussion in, on Ruby core and it's somewhere. And it, maybe no more global reg, regex variable. I mean, like I'm <laughs> curious to see like how far would you want to push the envelope for incompatibility? Well. So, like, because if I if I submit a patch that took the mm -hmm. the the global or the pseudo global um, regex things out, mm -hmm. would that be is that too far? 
No, maybe Ruby 3 will remove that kind of global mapping. Okay, that, it's, it's interesting to know kind of where you're thinking about in terms of what features are, oh, we have to have that. And some features are like, well, let's finally get rid of this thing, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and then the few things we, we are considering is the removing some kind of the obsolete poly stuff and the other language wise, but we want to keep the language compatibility as much as possible. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and uh, we, maybe we go remove, uh, fixing our legacy C API. Right. So you, the Ruby 3.0 maybe, mm -hmm. for, for Ruby 3.0, the every C extension might be uh, re 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 written. Yeah, so I think that, and this is just, now this is just me using the fact that I have the mic and you guys don't, but um, I think it's interesting to look at like, you know, so Ruby, like 1.8 one, one to 3.0, or oh, no, 1.8 to 3.0. <laughs> 1, 8 to 1, 9, especially since 1, 9, 1, 9, I mean, like, I'm sure you think of 1, 9, 0, oh, and 1, 9, 3 as being completely different. Mm -hmm. They're very different, in my mind, at least. Um, but, you know, so if you look at, let's say, that if you look at, like, a Python 2 versus a Python 3, uh -huh. you almost think they changed enough things for that it was a headache. They might as well just change a lot, just make it an even better language, just go all the way to fix all those things. I wonder if you're thinking that same thing for maybe for a Ruby 3, that we could just be like, let's just make it this great language that we want to be using and knowing that people are going to have to, you know, re rewrite extensions mm -hmm. or whatever it would be. Well, so I, after, two, uh, after 20 years, we, I think we define vaguely what the Ruby is. I think so too. Yeah. So, so the I don't think we have we we have to make any big change on the language. Okay. So the the if, even if I we have to make a, a, a big change in to the uh, implementation, but no, I don't I don't expect that big that kind of big change for the language. Hmm. Okay. Okay. But uh, maybe for the libraries. Okay. Maybe, yeah, maybe we ha we could make a big addition to the to the standard library. Hmm. Like oh, okay. A, yeah, no, yeah. My Actors persistent some, data structure yeah, or something yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's sure. interesting. Okay. Oh. Um, so let's see. Um, I have sort of two more questions. So I hope that you out there in the audience have been thinking about questions. Have you? Could I have a show of hands of people who ha are thinking about asking a question or any anyone? No, we're just, you're enthralled by hearing us talk. Okay, we've got a couple of people, okay. So I'm gonna ask a couple more questions and then um, I'm just gonna have the people who want to additionally have us chit chat kind of just come up here in the middle aisle and I'll give you a mic. So we'll do that in a sec. So be thinking about your question. Um, so this is sort of related to like big weird things that Ruby might have. So if someone asked, like, what are your thoughts on, like, say, prototype-based inheritance, and what, what if Ruby had those kinds of weird, or not weird, it's not that weird anymore, mm -hmm. right? Interest, other ways of mm -hmm. constructing class, like someone, I think the, this question actually had something like someone inheriting from the singleton class of another object, that kind of thing. Yeah, I'm not the true believer of the prototype-based uh, object or programming. Like, you know, the, it, it is, useful for sometimes, so that's the reason I, we provide the uh, singleton methods for a la prototype based uh, object system. But at the same time, you know, the, we are so familiar with the, the class based object system. So even, even on the language like JavaScript, the, everyone we invented a class based system on, on top of JavaScript. <laughs> yeah. So that, yeah. that indicates we are very, so, uh, Class-based object system is so useful on, mm -hmm. the, on the object R in system. So the, I'm, I'm not, yeah, I'm, I admit that this is some use case for the prototype-based uh, object system. So the singleton, uh, singleton methods are good enough for them. Yeah, well, I mean, and you can do it sort of loosely. You can do it sort of by using, you know, clone instead of dupe. Yes, you know, yes. So you can move singleton methods around and yeah. that kind of thing. But I don't think you see people, I think, I think that if you, if someone did that in code that you had to, or at least that I had to maintain, I would probably be very mad with, angry with them. Mm -hmm. Because it would be very odd, so. Yeah, and uh, interestingly, in, inside of the few, most implementation of the JavaScript, 
it creates the in hidden class. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, if you look at the the implementations, they all do that. Like, oh, I'm going to make a thing that looks like this shape. I'm like, aren't you just making classes at this yeah. point? Yeah. So. Yeah. The, the, so interestingly, they emulate the class on top of the prototype based class <laughs> that is implemented by the class based system. <laughs> weird. Very very weird. Um, that's a good that's a good uh, segue into another question. Um, are there what what other languages have you been using l playing with lately you know, uh, in your in your spare time? Now that now because now you know now that you do Ruby full time, you have to have a, yet a different hobby, mm -hmm. right? So well, <laughs> <laughs> is it fishing? Have you taken up fishing as a hobby yet? No. Okay. <laughs> well, so I I love to look look and lee, look for and lead the uh, uh, material about about the programming language. Re recently, I, we checked about uh, uh, some JVM based programming languages like Scala and Clojure. And, and, uh, and some, we, I, I, I mean, we, I checked about some uh, JavaScript based programming language like uh, uh, Coffee, CoffeeScript, as, you, as you'd use. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the, the language name is JSX from Japanese company. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is the compiler written in JavaScript, and it's static type, and mm. it's compiled into JavaScript. <laughs> it's just, so it's JavaScript all the way down. Yeah. It's like turtles all the way totally, down. Totally, totally JavaScript. <laughs> and interestingly, it runs faster than JavaScript. Wow, interesting. Just because, you know, the, it, it, it uses the very uh, drastic optimization, like mm. inlining. Right, the, well, I guess if you have static types, you mm -hmm. can do all you know, you can do yeah. all the normal static type trickery. Yep. So. So the the they uh, translated the the two D library written in JavaScript, Box two D, mm -hmm. into that that lang their language. It runs several percent, uh, maybe two times faster than wow. the original JavaScript wow. huh. version. Yeah. yeah. So the Google for JSX. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that it's not the Adobe product though. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, I, I mean, we've, and I don't know if you said it or someone else said it that, you know, like Ruby, well, we, I know that you said that originally Ruby started as your own Lisp, Matt's mm -hmm. Lisp. Matt's Lisp. So do you, do you do any Lisp anymore, any closure or any of those kind of things? No. Uh, are you still using Emacs? I still using Emacs. So okay. I, I, I still programming Emacs Lisp or that, yeah. but no other Lisp for, for a long time. What about Smalltalk? Any Smalltalk? I have no uh, other than Ruby? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have no chance to use small, small talk lately. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, there's, okay. So, someone wanted to ask, they, they actually phrased it as RVM or RBMV, and I'll just make it more generic, which is, do you use anything to manage your many different versions of Ruby on your laptop, or do you just sort of install them in different places? Uh, we, I, I install them in different places. Okay. Like, Right. Ruby, old school, Ruby one nine. Old, old school style. Yeah, old school style. Okay. Ruby one nine, Ruby one eight, and yeah. Ruby. Yeah. Um, so, the the question I'll end with here, which is, you know, so we're looking two two o preview one is now available. What can we do to help push two o preview forward? How how can we help make sure that um, as many things get done in it that it's going to hit the timelines? I mean, how can we've got we've got your 700 loyal, devoted <laughs> people here. How can we help out? Uh, just, just try out Ruby 2.0. So the Ruby 2.0, we try to make it compatible, but, but we still have, we know we still have some hiccups mm -hmm. in the compatibility and the bugs. So, so I, we don't want to find them after we release the final ones. Right. So, so please try, try out your you run your Rails application on Ruby, Ruby 2.0 preview, and uh, you have you might see the problem. So just just report us on the yeah our red Okay, yeah. great. That would help. Okay, so let's let's do questions from the audience now. So who's got questions? I know I know that you guys do. I'm gonna put my laptop down now. Just a sec. Okay, I'll take this. <laughs> hey, Eric, get your lazy ass up. Yeah, you're right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, Matt. Oh, whoa. I, I think I, nope, this mic's not working. Give me that. Yeah, you, you just use that one. 
So, so Matt, so which is your favorite RubyConf? Which is favorite RubyConf? Yeah. Or they are like your children. You can't, you can't judge. <laughs> I love all of them, as, as far <laughs> as I attended. <laughs> you know, the, the different conference has different tastes. Like a RubyConf is the RubyConf. Right. And we have the Ruby Kaigi conference in, back in Japan, and the, which is comfortable since I, have, I can't speak in Japanese. <laughs> and uh, we have Yuroko, and uh, in, you might know that Yuroko is uh, held in different city each year. So at the, the end of the conference, the uh, audience decide to next city, just like Olympic, Olympics. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. But that, that, that is crazy. Fun. Yeah, that's crazy. Those that's Europeans. Fun. Yeah, Europeans. <laughs> They are great. <laughs> <laughs> they are pretty great. Yeah, and we have the several other conferences like RubyConf China. We in two weeks later, I, I we're going to attend that, and then we become, yeah everywhere. So how much how much are you traveling these these this uh, last actually, year or two years? Actually, nine times this year, and this is too big. Two, Maybe, usually, at five times a year. Yeah. 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 Hey. Oh. Is that mic? Is that microphone? Is this working? Yes. It's just yep. yeah. Hey, so I was wondering what the uh, developers of Ruby are using Ripper for, and if you plan on keeping it around in the future. Uh, you mean the core developer? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know anybody using uh, among, uh, using Ripper among the core developers. So, so we. Who, who wrote, yeah, but who we wrote it not, originally? Mm -hmm. Who wrote it originally? Uh, Minelo Aoki, who, who is the the uh, author of the Rack on Oh stuff. right. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, we are, we are not going to remove it from the Ruby two or or any any soon future. So it'll be there, but you, no one no one internally has been working on it yeah. lately. But it does it it doesn't mean we we are not. Maybe that's yeah. an opening for some contribution. It, yeah, it, it doesn't mean it's all fun or anything abandoned one anything. Right. You know, the no core developer use Rails. Nobody worked on <laughs> Call CC for a long time either. So you know, and it didn't go anywhere for a long time. No. So. It's on. It's oh. just quiet. I love that uh, the, the the new hash syntax is very JSON oriented. Is there a plan to make it fully JSON sort of compatible, where you could do strings instead of symbols? How would that look? What would that look like? Like quote foo quote colon? Yeah, like you can do it in in JavaScript with JSON. Uh, yeah, in JavaScript, the the fundamental key is uh, strings. But in, in Ruby, the, the basic key is symbols. They are different. So, so making it the, the more JavaScript-like, so the, we have to remove symbols or the, make symbols compatible with strings or something like that. And that we once tried the, the I symbols, remember. I remember symbols this. compatible to the strings, but that, that was tragedy. We, <laughs> we removed that. It was, very, it was very odd. For those of you who didn't, who didn't see it, it was very strange. So unfortunately, I, I have to say no. But the, the strings, the, the quotes, after, after uh, then followed by column, it, we, there's, there might be a place for that. For symbols, yes. OK. Uh, so we had a really interesting discussion at, uh, at DCAMP recently about what would you be doing if you had enough money where you didn't have to worry. And out of that came an interesting question that uh, I think is, uh, it just makes you think a little. So what do you think the most important problem is that programmers could be working on? And if you don't have a, an answer, that's cool. Uh, maybe what do you think the, the most the project that you've seen that most helps humanity, maybe, is? These are some lofty topics, my friend. Whoa. I don't know. We're all the way at the end here. I don't know if we've got the brain power for this one. <laughs> I believe that the most important problem you have to solve is your problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, your problem. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, in general, for, the, for human being, I don't know, maybe the scalability? Like a scalability for the multi-core or supercomputer? That's all anybody talks about now is the, yeah. the, the, the looming scalability problem. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about the, the technical detail, but in general, the, the human being must face to solve the scalability problem. 
Uh, I guess a bit of a follow-up on that. Uh, I know you answered it last year, but um, I know a lot of people are talking about it on Twitter. Can you comment a little bit on the future of the GIL? Which of uh, On the what? The global interpreter lock. Uh. Oh. <laughs> but we sort of touched on that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Or early on, but if, do you want to do you want to mention it again? Okay, the Koichi, the Yav guy, once tried to remove the global uh, global locked uh, total, uh, global locked. He once removed, and then he put the, the fine grained lock everywhere, and it makes uh, Ruby so slow, significantly slow. So you don't want that. <laughs> maybe, then, maybe for maybe for Ruby three thousand. Yeah, maybe three thousand. Yeah, the the. <laughs> See, I got it. I got it. We have. <laughs> <laughs> we have two major reasons no, for that. that. So that the one the the first one is that we have the legacy C API, which which prevents uh, effective uh, the thread safe model. I can I can attest that that is a, a big mm. problem. The per, the second one is the. To, to implement the ThreadSafe uh, virtual machine, we have the, the ThreadSafe data structure everywhere, which is quite difficult to implement. So, so we, if we uh, invested enough and we had good, ta good time, so we can't, it is not theoretically impossible. So, so, so maybe let, in the future. So let, let's, it, there, maybe, maybe we have the gill. But maybe instead what we do is, so I know that the new, that 2.0 is going to have bitmap marking mm -hmm. so that we're going to have better cop mem you know, memory usage across yeah. children process, that kind of thing. Yeah. Maybe, you know, is there, is there a place maybe in the scope of things where we have some sort of communication mechanism built in so that you can easily communicate with another yeah, Ruby that process? Might, that might be the way. So I really, really, really love the... Sort of like Erlang, yeah. you know, you could send yeah. those, yeah. Easy, easily That's send true. messages back and forth. Uh, I really love the, the, the architecture of the Unicorn. So the having uh, the, got multi-process, uh, then it, uh, going back and forth and communicate. Mm -hmm. So that that kind of the uh, the concurrency is the the best way for C Ruby in the near future. Okay. Okay. Or the, maybe the Node.js style. So having a, a, a asynchronous. Uh, so Ru Ruby, Ruby 3.0, all callbacks. Maybe with fibers. <laughs> with fibers, there we go. <laughs> um, hey, Matt. Um, so we had a talk uh, two days ago or yesterday about JRuby and comparing JRuby with MRI and the performance differences. And they showed there was like a very big performance difference be between running JRuby and JVM and re uh, running MRI. Uh, just wanted to ask you, I, I thought you were at that talk, and so I just wanted to ask you, ask you what you think about it. Uh, performance between JVM? Yes, yeah, so what do you think about JRuby and the performance improvements that JRuby's been yeah, getting they as are, compared they are, to <laughs> CRuby? Well, they are sitting on the, the shoulder of giant, yeah. JVM. So we, I, in some aspect, we, uh, I envy them. them. So the you know the, there are millions of smart people behind JVM, so the JVM development is so heavily invested. So, but at the same time, we we implement our own virtual machines. We, we can do anything we want. That is that is that is fun. So that's our primary. It's also motivation. a curse, though. <laughs> curse, though. You know the you know the the joy and curse comes sometimes pretty often. Like, like me, like a, I'm a language lover, so I, I enjoy myself for a long time, but it's, it's sometimes as a curse. Oh, yeah. You, know, I, I, I you know understand you that. I, I know what you mean. <laughs> I, I do understand. Yeah. By the way, so J, JVM, so the, uh, since this April, the Koichi is fully f uh, working on uh, improving your full time, so they, he's making the significant effort the last few months. So we are going, the 1.9 and 2.0 will be better, so. Better, faster. Better, like faster. The, the, the progress is gonna yeah. pick up, because Koichi doesn't have to worry about students anymore, for no. instance. <laughs> <laughs> Koichi has been yeah. a professor before, for the before last that, few years, yeah, if you didn't know that. Before that, he's a faculty, so he was so busy. Yeah. So uh, you commented on how you started Ruby as a hobby. Uh, and now that you're at Heroku and it's your job, do you worry about that changing your philosophy or outlook at all now that you have to do it uh, 40 hours a week and you get paid and there's more pressure, I'm assuming? Mm -hmm. No, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Just because, you know, 
I was I was hired by Heroku as a the my title is the chief architect Ruby. <laughs> so that means that I'm the chief architect of the Ruby programming language, not the Heroku. So so they didn't ask me anything about their business except for attending a few conferences. Like but, a, but what seven. about now that you've you know now that you now that it's a full time job, mm -hmm. you know? And I guess but at NACL you it was. You yes. were working on it for for the most part full time. Mm -hmm. So maybe when you when you switch from it being just a hobby and now someone and I've gone through this myself as well, when it switched from being a hobby to now someone wants to pay you to work on it, did that change your your feelings about it? Did it change your mentality? Like now people depend on me to actually get stuff going. Hmm. I I don't think I have changed. It's been a while, I know, but yeah, I I worked for uh for, for work for Ruby full time for last ten more than ten years and. Uh, I don't think I haven't changed yet a bit. Okay. So I I love to working on programming language. I love to working on Ruby. So I just uh, the continues the work I love. Great. Uh, all right. Uh, me and my colleagues often consider ourselves very lucky to be programming in Ruby, and we really appreciate that it's developed or maximized for developer happiness. And then we start thinking, but you who develop Ruby, you're working in C. Uh, do you ever feel sorry for not doing enough Ruby and too much C? Well, <laughs> uh, my... I've heard you say before that you consider yourself a C developer. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I, my, the best programming language, I believe, is Ruby, of course. But uh, the C is the second best, I believe. <laughs> Good. Well, do, do you end up writing, I mean, like... You know, I know that you, as you're writing M Ruby and you're doing all these other things, do you end up writing a lot of Ruby day to day much? Uh, yeah, the the most standard library in M, M Ruby is written in Ruby itself, mm -hmm. so then they com convert it into the, the the bytecode. So, so I I often use uh, Ruby for the, writing the tools and you know whatever. Yeah, whatever. yeah, obviously. Yeah. 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 yeah I, I didn't say that, but but my I have the two hats. Like I, I, I'm a designer of the Ruby language, and uh, I'm working on Ruby 2.0 to 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 be a better and best programming language ever. And uh, at the same time, as an engineer, as a programmer, I'm working on the the alternative implementation by myself, <laughs> named MRuby, and uh, which is the uh, the Ruby implementation for the for small footprint. And uh, I, I, yeah, as a programmer. Yeah, I'm working on MRuby, and I'm pretty happy about that. Good. Hi, uh, Benjamin Fleischer. I was wondering um, what you think about the Ruby spec project, mm -hmm. and if uh, you use it at all for your own d uh, description of uh, the C Ruby, and if not, if you have any other way that you test your own implementation of the language meets what you expect it to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I was I was going to talk discuss this this topic about the Brian himself, but I didn't have time. I'm right sure for now. he'll he'll make he'll make time for you. I think. Uh, so, <laughs> Brian, <laughs> I, I'll go for him. And uh, all I can say f for now is that we we can improve the communication between the the C Ruby core developers and the and, uh, Ruby spec people. Do, do have you been using? Or we can. We want to do that again. Should we try again? There we go. Um, um, have you been using? Uh, so does M Ruby? I assume has tests. Mm -hmm. um, have you been rewriting your own tests? Have you been thought about using Ruby spec to help whatever parts of that are the same in M Ruby that are in normal Ruby? Have you thought about that much at all? Or? Yeah. The the problem is we have we have to. S several uh, not problem, the concern sure. about the, the, the Ruby spec, spec and test, and uh, we have several uh, the test specific to our implementation, mm. so we don't want to import them to, to sure. the Ruby spec. Sure. So, but we we need to test them, mm -hmm. so we have the alternative test anyway. Yeah. And uh, so, in that sense, the Ruby spec and our test is kind of duplicate yeah. effort. So we have to, we need to have some kind of motivation on, so on Ruby spec. Yeah, I think one thing that is that when when Brian and I have been working on Ruby spec for however long now, 
that we've always, we've had this constant conversation back and forth, which is when we would, we would go into spec a behavior, and I think we've talked about this over the years, we'd go in to say like, okay, well, when you pass in this set of arguments, it does this weird thing, and we start to think, is this, was this designed or was this just an accident, mm -hmm. those kinds of things? I mean, I, I, I'm, you know, your take on those, there's probably a lot of those. There's probably a lot of weird cases where you're like, yeah. oh, well, this does, well, that should be unspecified or it doesn't need to be specced or whatever because no one should depend on it, whatever it be. Does that seem accurate? Yeah. So the, the point is, so the Ruby spec, def, uh, the step further toward the, the uh, behavior that we consider the unspecified. Sure, right. So because it's hard to know if was this unspecified or yes. not, right? Gotcha. So that, that's the reason I said that we have to improve our communication. Sure. Okay, we're doing pretty good right here. Um, last question, I think, and then we're going to go to the documentary. Oh, actually, what time is it? How are we doing on time? No one wants to help me here. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, All right. Yeah, go go right ahead. I was having a conversation with some people at work about um, the null object pattern, which Avdi Grimm's written all about, and, and I haven't used it much personally. But one of the discussion points came up of that they thought it was really useful, but the fact that it couldn't evaluate to false, a null object couldn't be falsy in Ruby was, they thought, a, a real barrier to using. I'm wondering, A, whether you, what you think of the null object pattern, and B, how hard would it be, uh, and if there'd be any interest in extending Core Ruby somehow to either create a, a null object prototype that would be false, so that you could hurt from, or some way to make null objects that were falsy. So this is, uh, can I rephrase your question? Would, do you think that having like two bool on an object makes sense so that in every condition you would say like, hey object, could you turn yourself into a true or a false now so that people who want to do like nil object patterns that can automatically be defined to nil, I, I mean I know how I feel about this but I'll hear how you feel, you want to hear how I feel about it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's quite interesting to design decision decision, and uh, I, I don't regret that. So the, having false and nil as a false values, uh, a little bit weird when you first read, but uh, in, in a daily case, it, it, it is pretty useful for many cases, so I don't regret that. No, so, so the question would be that, so right now there's no, I'll be specific, there's no coercion protocol in a condition. So if I said if obj, uh -huh. The only way that that condition will be true mm -hmm. is if. Yeah, yeah, I understand. So, so, so the obj that we don't like say like, oh, does obj have a two bool method? Oh, let me call that and a then look bool. at. Yeah. Yeah, I understand that. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I have th thought about that several times before that, but it it slows down the in interpret executions significantly. So uh, I I don't think we don't want that kind I, of stuff. My thoughts, since I've got the mic, haha, -ha, is I think it. Vi so you know, we've talked. To, you've talked a lot about the the principle of least surprise, which is actually good because we're going to watch the Y documentary, and that's in there. Um, and I think that that kind of violates that because I think when you say if obj, the idea that this object could say like, no, actually I'm false, haha, -ha, screw you, it'd be very confusing <laughs> to. <laughs> It would be yeah. very confusing to the reader of that code to know, you know, because if you're trying to figure out how code works, you'd have to go and say, like, at every condition, oh, let me go out and see, oh, this is a thing. Let me go, oh, I got to go now to find a tool, and, you know, it's, yeah. it sounds maddening. Yeah, but I understand that strategy. But, you know, that, but if, if we say so, we have a lot of similar plays in Ruby, so the, the performance is the biggest reason. Yeah, I think that the place that people want that the most, especially when they first come to Ruby, is that zero is not false. Not false. And so people are always like, well, but it's zero, but it's, you know, and I think that, I think, I think personally, I think at, at years now of using Ruby and using plenty of other languages, I personally think that nil and false is the, the right solution. I mean, like C, obviously there's nothing else mm -hmm. other than zero anyway, but when you look at like, I don't know, there's a bunch, like isn't, isn't there like 18 things that are fa that are false in like JavaScript and PHP, like an empty <laughs> array and zero and a hash with only three key? I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on and on. <laughs> Very confusing. Anyway, yeah, like a pearl and empty, empty string strings. of spells. Anyway, so we've gotten very pedantic now. So um, if there's no more questions, which it looks like there's not, uh, let's give Matt a hand. <laughs>